ਜਸ ਕਲ ਬਾਤ ਦੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਦਰਸ਼ਕਾਂ ਦਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਹੈ ਸਾਰੇ ਨੂੰ ਅਰੁਣ ਕੌਰ ਦੀ ਪਿਆਰ ਭਰੀ ਸਤਿ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਜੀ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਆਲ ਫॉर ਜੁਆਇਨਿੰਗ ਮੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਗ੍ਰੇਟਫੁਲ ਆ ਮੈਂ ਕਿ ਕਿੰਨਾ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸਾਥ ਦਿੰਦੇ ਹੋ ਮੇਰਾ ਔਰ ਇੰਨੇ ਦੇਰ ਤੋਂ ਦੇ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ ਐਂਡ ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਮੈਂ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਵੀ ਅਨਾਉਂਸ ਕੀਤਾ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਅੱਜ ਖਾਸ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਬੜਾ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਨ ਵਾਲੇ ਆ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਕਿ ਕੋਈ ਵੀ ਚੀਜ਼ ਜੋ ਵੀ ਇਸ ਸੰਸਾਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੈਗੀ ਉਹਦਾ ਇੱਕ ਅੰਤ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਬਦਲਦੀ ਹੈ same as with life zindagi ant hunda oda death but somehow sanu oh fearful lagdi hai assi us to darde ha so inna darde ha ki assi gal vi nahi karde but hai ta aani aani hai har ik de you know jo aaya one jana hi hai fir vi kuch aisi attachment sanu hai hai life de naal ya jo vi assi itthe ikattha kar jande ha ਕਿ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਉਹਦੀ ਸੋਚ ਉਹਦਾ ਨਾਮ ਲੈਣਾ ਉਹਦੇ ਅਰਾਊਂਡ ਜੋ ਵੀ ਸਿਕਨੈਸ ਇਲਨੈਸ ਅਸੀਂ ਐਕਸਪੀਰੀਅੰਸ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਕਿ ਸ਼ਾਇਦ ਲੋਕੀ ਯੂ نو ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਨਿਕਲ ਕੇ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਡਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਨੇਖਾ ਸੈਨਿਆਲ ਅ ਯੰਗ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਬੜੀ ਹੀ ਪਿਆਰੀ ਬੱਚੀ ਹੈ ਬਟ ਉਹਦੀ ਚੋਇਸਸ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਇੱਕਦਮ ਕਿਊਰੀਅਸ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ how how did she at very young age choose to be a palliative doctor i mean specialist in jithone har vele ek serious patients de naal uh, time bitana hai aur uh, shayad roz di mar, you know ek routine hona hai oda ki unne death dekhni hai so ode naal meri gal baat hui so bahut hi i am really grateful ke enne busy schedule cho ਡਾਕਟਰ ਨੇਹਾ ਸੈਨਿਆਲ ਨੂੰ ਪਲੀਜ਼ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਕਰੋ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਨੇਹਾ ਸੈਨਿਆਲ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਸੋ ਮਚ ਫॉर ਬੀਇੰਗ ਹੀਅਰ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਸੋ ਮਚ ਫॉर ਹੈਵਿੰਗ ਮੀ ਹੀਅਰ ਆਮ ਸੋ ਗਲੈਡ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਏਬਲ ਟੂ ਟਾਕ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਥਿਸ ਟੌਪਿਕ ਵਿਦ ਯੂ ਐਂਡ ਆਰ ਇੰਟਾਇਰ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਜੀ ਨੇਹਾ ਐਂਡ ਮੈਂ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਦੱਸਦਾ ਕਿ ਨੇਹਾ ਕੋਈ ਓਪਰੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਬਾਹਰਲੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਆਲਮੋਸਟ 10 ਇਅਰਸ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਇਹਨੂੰ ਮਿਲ ਚੁੱਕੇ ਹੋ she has been a child guest in i'm a child very young uh, in on our galbat show she uh, or a uh, beti hai ki meri bahut hi close friend ashu senyal di uh, meri apni bachchi hai main nu grow up hunde han dekhya hai and uh, to be honest uh, neha assi tonu dekhte si sare bacche ikatthe hunde si mere galbat viewers nu sab nu pata hai ki assi khaas taur te tin families badi often ikatthe hunde si and mm-hmm. we had like sabde mila ke ek tarah nal sa, seven kids and she used to be the leader har <laughs> cheez de vich bachche piche na meri daughter te especially mainu lagda duck walk ho na and jodu piche piche ja rahi hundi si ade <laughs> and um, she is a trend setter i would say fashion de vich bhi fashionista you know you she was as a child she is now but neha tell me when did you know ki tu do- tu si doctor banna um jab main school ch si to main hospice volunteering um i did that and it was probably that experience jo mainu sikhaya ki this is what i want to do in my life i've always known ki main logo da seva karna si and when i was doing this volunteering at the very end of life seeing people who were lonely, who were suffering, who um really just needed company mm. and I would sit with them and I would see how the doctors would give different medicines to try to make sure that they're feeling better and there was just something in me that made me realize this is actually amazing and this is so rewarding and it's so needed and this is what i want to do with my life and i think it was that moment that made me realize and that experience so jo menu samajh aa rahi hai ki tusi volunteer kita hospice ode vich so let's pehle meri audience nu eh so what's the difference and what is palliative care actually what is palliative care yeah that's a great question yeah a lot of people have never heard of palliative care before and um if they have they've usually heard it in the context of hospice mm. um so there's a great um 
there's a graphic that's oftentimes showed with this. Let's show, show it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's actually a different one. So this is a description of what palliative care does. This is the one that shows where hospice fits inside palliative care. So you can think of palliative care as this umbrella and it is the management of symptoms. It's the management of people who have chronic illnesses or serious illness. And then part of what we do in palliative care is hospice. And that happens when someone is very close to the end of their life. We know that they're now dying or actively dying. Um, generally speaking, they have months to live, but it can be weeks to live or days to live. And it's basically just a very, very intense palliative care, specifically at someone's end of life. So palliative care and hospice are not exactly the same thing. You can get palliative care and see a palliative care doctor even if you're not actively dying or at the very, very end of your life. Okay. So palliative care is more like if you have a serious illness, you need support? Like, Yes, know? and we actually do palliative care for children. We do it for pregnant women as well when they get diagnosed, unfortunately, with some sort of very serious um, uh, uh, diagnosis in their fetus, which may not be compatible with life. So we actually can be involved in people's lives at very different stages, really from childhood to pregnancy, all the way to adulthood and elderly. So um, I'm curious to know, just trying to see Dastrio, it seems as if, um, you know, but a depressing atmosphere. So how do you deal with it? Or how do you go? You feel as if you got, this is kind of a calling for you and it came on very early on. So how do you deal with so many supports which you have to provide? Yeah, that's a, that's a very, very good question. And I hear that all the time because we are dealing with death every day. We, all of our patients are experiencing probably the worst day, the worst week or the worst month of their life. But for us, it's every single day of our life supporting somebody who's at the very worst time of their life. So I find it very, very rewarding. And I think everyone in the field of palliative care finds it so rewarding, which is why we all chose it as our careers. Um, and I think the, the feeling that you can be there for someone at such a vulnerable time is what's so important. Um, and then taking care of yourself as well. We are definitely a group of doctors that have to practice what we preach. When we're telling others how to relax, how to deal with anxiety, how to cope with all these heavy topics of life, we also need to do the same thing. Right, right. I mean, this um, conversation will you know, continue, but uh, let me take a short break. Saranda fir swagat hai aur gal ho rahi hai aaj near end life di like when we are ready ke asi is yug dunya cho we are passing away to another world e bhi keh sakde ha par mostly they are very hard conversations so let's ask uh, dr neha dr neha thank you for being here and uh, neha thodi ki observation hai how what is your observation that we don't talk about it. It's hard to, you know, in the conversation karande which sadi families, which even if we want to, we don't do it. Uh, what do you think, uh, what contributes to this difficulty? Yeah, I think that in our Punjabi community, which is similar to other communities, it's a scary topic. People are worried and fearful, and that's a natural feeling as humans. I think in particular, what I have seen in my in my Indian patients, my BC patients is, and even I've experienced growing up in this culture, we don't talk about anything that's even remotely negative. If you try to, oftentimes you'll hear shub shub bolo, ah. which means just say good things only. Maybe it's a little bit of superstition. Or if you try talking about something like death with your parents or your grandparents, they'll say, they don't want to think about it. They don't want to talk about it. Right. 
So that's partly why our specialty is here to help families, to help patients have these difficult conversations. And some tips that I've discovered while working in this field is that you can, you know, if there's a death in the family, that's oftentimes a, a good way to talk about it without talking about it. You can ask your mother or your father, or your close loved one, what they thought, if they agreed with it, if they would have wanted something different, for example, dialysis or dying in the ICU or dying at home with Gunga gel in your mouth. You can get a lot of information about your family indirectly during those moments. Um, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I get you, I hear you. But I'm just thinking like, it's hard to make a conversation like as if you said, oh, shub shub bolo. So, agar Ganga jal, hum pehle soch rahe hain uske baare mein, to kya mere manne ki baat soch rahe ho? Like, you know, that kind of thought process is there. So, what makes it easy? How do you do that? Um, well, I think part of it is you have to wait for the right time. Um, when you're trying to talk about these things, you'll notice that your family member, your loved one will feel nervous. They're not going to want to talk about it and it's okay to give them that space. And then maybe when you're walking or if you're driving in the car and you're not facing each other, people are a lot more comfortable talking to you if you're both parallel facing forward or doing some sort of activity. Okay. And at that time, you can try to bring it up and maybe not directly, maybe just ask them about their feelings and try to find out why they don't want to talk to you about it. Mm. I think there's another thing, like as a psychologist's point of view, it's when you say, oh, my, you know, somebody I know was having this conversation and that's how you start. Or from the movie, that that guy was doing this thing. If they had known it, to family argue nahi kar rahi hai Like, you know, to by giving an example that fa families were arguing uh, at the end of life, but agar o gal pehle hoi hundi, te shayad nahi hundi. So something like that, I think that, that might be helpful. But what do you uh, think, uh, Neha, what is your observation? Ki hai. Do you think there are lifestyle changes that you can get to the uh, end of life? De which suffering hai hai. Is it connected to lifestyle? Like, you know, people who have made different choices, they reach that. Because there is a prayer, a kardas, a you know, hai ke, oh, you know, 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 Mm -hmm. So, uh, this feeling and that thing we've heard and said so many times, what is your observation? That the last moment that you patients get to meet, do life choices have been different or not? You get people from all over different, uh, you know, lifestyles. Yeah, so um, you get both. There are definitely people whose lifestyle choices impact their reason for dying or they're dying a little bit earlier because of it and they like actually what? lifestyle need... like what like smoking drinking? for example some people are smokers and then they get lung cancer mm -hmm. and we see them and one of the things we have to help them deal with is the guilt that they feel because they feel as if they brought this upon themselves because we know that there's a link okay. um or somebody who um had very, very uncontrolled diabetes, and now their kidneys are failing, and they don't want dialysis, and we have to unfortunately tell them, your lifespan is now limited, and you're now at the end of your life. So we have some people who are like that, and, um, and that's okay, because everyone's going to feel differently, and that's why we have all these services now to help support you through that. But then there's a lot of people who are you know, trying to live the best lifestyle they can and they just happen to get Even then. lung cancer or any other type of cancer. And for them, um, you know, you can't die while walking, talking, and being your normal self. It's, it's a process and it's something a lot of people don't know about because we don't talk about it, we don't publicize it. But there are stages that you go through and there are expected changes that happen as you get closer and closer to that final transition period. One thing that's very interesting that I've seen 
um, that's kind of at that brink of medicine and spirituality is that a lot of people start hallucinating when they get very close to the end of their life. And they start hallucinating either people that have already died in their life, Somebody I saw hallucinated that they had lost a baby years ago and they had never talked about it. And the wife was at the bedside and she said, oh my gosh, my husband is seeing the baby that we lost 20 years ago. And so we usually medicate symptoms that are uncomfortable or causing a lot of distress to people. But when we see these hallucinations, we allow people to experience it and we really don't medicate that unless it's causing them a lot of distress. And from what I've seen, it might seem that, you know, people might have to get messages from people that have already passed on and helps them make that transition. Um, but we won't really know because this is at the very edge of what we know about medicine and science. Mm -hmm. Interesting. A uh, young uh, medical scientist, I would say, and, uh, you know, the connection between spirituality, God, and we'll talk more about this. Let me take a sh quick short break. Welcome, everyone. Saranda Fir Swagate or Swagate, Dr. Neha Sanyalda. So, Dr. Neha Sanyal saying thank you once again for being here and uh, just, I know it's hard to answer such questions, but Neha, do you believe in God? I, I do believe in a higher being, for sure, 100%. And I've bonded with that over many, many patients. But I also have a very strong belief in science. So we have a lot of patients who um, don't believe in God either at the end of so, life. They're yeah. atheists or they just believe in science. Um, and I'm able to bond with them as well. Um, so tell me something, how is it different when you are dealing with people who believe in God and they think, oh, you know, the way you were saying came a uh, quick guilt feeling like, you know, something I must have done that I'm suffering or the others. How, how, how is the difference? Do I have any observations? So actually part of palliative care is um, we screen and we support spirituality because that is a part of being human and it's a, it's a very important part of dying for people. Mm. Um, so we have chaplains as part of our service. We do um, a lot of spirituality care. So we try, especially in today's world, we have Buddhist patients who come in and they believe in chanting at the end of life. So we will oftentimes walk past a room in the ICU or on the floor and there's chanting going on and you know this is somebody who is at the end of life and when that happens we light a candle outside the room one of those electronic ones just so that everyone knows to just be mindful of that mm. um, and then some people who are Christian they believe in the ritual of last rites um, and they want to get sacrament of the sick which is a, a Catholic Christian prayer that they would really like, they would like to get this anointment before they pass, um, or the family wants it. So we are allow a priest to come in or a chaplain to come in and do this for them. Um, so I think that the dying experience is very personal for everyone. It's very different for each individual. And what I love about palliative care is that this is something we pay attention to, we value, and we try to make sure that we honor whatever the culture or religion is of each person so that each person can have a very, um, in a way, a very good dying experience. Oh, I like that phrase, good dying experience. But mm -hmm. Neha, um, I mean, what I'm thinking is that earlier times, you know, I would feel more comfortable rather than in hospital setting or a professional medical setting. Agar main apni family they surrounded hoa or you know I go. So is there an option like if the ke, if somebody wants ki nahi main kar ja ke apni family they which I want to breathe my last. So mm -hmm. it, do you let them do that? Yeah, we, uh, we try our absolute best to make that happen. And there's hospice programs that can actually support you at home so that if anything happens, you don't have to come back to the hospital. 
And just in your own house, you could get all the treatment and a nurse can come to you if needed. Um, I actually um, also noticed I had an Indian patient once and she only spoke in Hindi. So I was able to connect with her, speak with her. And to me, um, I thought she wanted to die at home. But what I noticed in our culture is oftentimes our elder, our elders that we respect say, but Jake and decide, but Jake oh. and they think that their kids know them the best. Yay. So in this situation, I thought she wanted to die at home, but her kids said, we want absolutely everything done for her, everything, dialysis, intubation, ventilator, ICU. And, you know, they were actually, they, they did that. Um, that is how she, she passed eventually. She, we did absolutely everything for her. Um, but what I learned from that is that that was her choice to have her kids decide for her. Huh. And so therefore, I think... Um, especially women, I think. Yeah. And um, yeah. my observation is that especially women would say, jo putter especially jade onge na, oh, jo decide karenge, mere waste theek hai. And they're happy in that if somebody else makes a decision for them. But that's yeah. good, you know. Uh, but uh, do you think uh, end tak e sare jade processes hai gaya, e, can we talk about it earlier? Like, can I tell my family I don't want to go in on a ventilator or, you know, what condition you should just, can I tell them? I think that every adult over the age of 18 should at least have had made one decision and bo decision is um, kisi ko identify karna ke ye mere kwahish ko janta hai, ye mujhe janta hai, and if I cannot make any decision, ye mere liye decisions le sakta hai or le sakti hai. Hmm. So I think that it's important that's a healthcare proxy and you have to go to your doctor and you, that's the witness you need and it doesn't even have to be your doctor, it can be any two adults and you just sign on the paper, this is who I want making decisions for me. Okay. So that's a very important thing to talk about early on. Um, and then as you get more sick, there's two other documents that you should definitely fill out. One is an advanced care planning document and the other one is a form that says, I do or I do not want CPR, I do or I do not want intubation. Mm. Um, and everyone will reach that point at a different time. Some people can tolerate a lot more than others before they reach that point. Right. But when you feel like you're close or when you feel like you've reached that point, it's absolutely important to have that paper. Otherwise you will get things you don't want necessarily. Mm. So have you seen sometimes when these papers, these doc documents are missing? Jab ye nahi kiya hota, toh families, maybe there are two, three kids and one wants something and the other wants something and there's an argument there. This happens all the time, unfortunately. Ye hamesha hota hai, I think, almost on a daily basis, jab mein kaam pe hoon. And what we do in those situations is we get a family meeting with everybody together and we are the ones who help them understand what is it that that parent, that mom or that dad wanted. It's not about what you want, it's about what they want. Mm -hmm. And we help work through that and it doesn't always happen in one meeting. Sometimes it takes three, four meetings, it takes time. And so it's a lot better for your family if you can make that decision ahead of time and put it into writing. I know. There's a lot more I want to talk to you. Let me take a quick break. Welcome back and please sare welcome karo palliative care specialist Dr. Neha Senyalnal. Asi gal kar rahe aaj aur Dr. Neha, um, you know, you are a specialist in this particular field. Totally amazed, you know, you chose this and you told us why. Before I can ask you more about that, let me take one call. Hello? Hello? Satrikal, Kirti ji, haan ji, kya kahenge aap? Sabse pehle to thank you so much, uh, Dr. Neha also and to you and your team ki aap aisa topic likhi aai. Kyunki I lost my father last year all of a sudden. I like was checking a lot of videos and all and all. 
so I know how it feels. Mm-hmm. But उस दौरान मुझे कुछ experience हुआ था जब मुझसे मेरी एक friend मिलने आई तो आजकल लोग ये चीज समझते हैं और बात करते हैं अपने बच्चों से शी सेड कि योर फादर वेंट पीसफुली एट होम एंड इन आर्म्स ऑफ माय ब्रदर सो ही वाज लकी एंड इट वाज जस्ट फ्यू मिनट्स थिंग्स तो शी सेड मैंने अपने बेटे को ऑलरेडी बोल दिया है कि कभी अगर मुझे समझो कुछ ऐसा वेंटिलेटर पे जाना पड़े या क्या सो डू नॉट कीप मी ऑन दैट डू नॉट थिंक ट्वाइस Just let me live peacefully. तो ये चीजें आजकल लोग I'm happy कि लोग समझ रहे हैं इन चीजों को नहीं तो मुझे याद है कई बार पहले ऐसा होता था कि जब parents के सामने will की भी अगर कोई बात करे तो उनको लगता था कि क्या चाहते हो तुम you know they used to feel bad about it. Absolutely. पर आजकल लोग कह देते हैं अपने बच्चों से तो it's very nice. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much. I just wanted to share this with you. Thank you, thank you, Kirti. Just I really appreciate this call. And uh, Dr. Neha, Jive, I am Kirti Jive. I am saying that you know, they felt that mm-hmm. he went peacefully. He was at home. But I am sure it's not always the choice. You know, mm-hmm. people who can't be at home while this time, which is ending their life, we expect as family. people like you specialists like you and nurses and everybody oh oi kar rahe honge jo assi agar utthe hoiye te kariye so what kind of support you and your team gives at this time what is your role at that time yeah that's great so actually you're right sometimes it is not a choice to be at home one example i can think of is um i've seen two men now who wanted to die at home so badly hmm. but they kept having seizures and they had seizures every 5 minutes then every 10 minutes um but it was not going away and there's nothing we could do at home to help help them with their seizures so they had to come into the hospital and at that time we use medicine to um break the seizures and it has to be iv medicine and you can't do iv medicine at home it's we they had to come into the hospital um but there's other ways in which we help and support too um once you're in the hospital we try to make it as homely as possible we have pet therapy so dogs come you can pet them art therapy music therapy the school of music at the university i work at actually put together a specific playlist so that we can play it in people's rooms there's massage therapy so you can get massage um and there's a lot of there's acupuncture um a lot of um aromatherapy herbal remedies in addition to all the medicine that we use um and so therefore sometimes when you don't have the choice to be at home um we try to make the hospital the next best thing oh my god that that really helps neha i mean for myself i must say i'm less scared now you know so kyunki bad. main bhi bahut hor bande aa wakan main bhi ye badi wari kehndi hai ki hai bas ghar vich you know kuch bhi hoye itthe nahi dekhange jo hoyega maybe it's some beautiful music going on in my room i'll be fine somebody like you taking care of me i'll be fine <laughs> thank you you know sometimes people actually like it so much that they don't want to go home because their family is then allowed to just be their family and they don't have to be the nurse they don't have to be the caregiver they don't have to wash them so it actually can be a really beautiful thing and um you know sometimes the patient does get lonely at night when the family has to go but certain hospitals have what's called a palliative care unit and in the unit you can sleep there and the sofas turn into beds and um you can stay with them 24/7 if you want um but not every hospital has that so there's a lot of variation out there no interesting because i never saw it like that उस नजरिए उस परसपेक्टिव कभी देखा ही नहीं कि यू नो एट द एंड ऑफ लाइफ वैन इफ यू रियली नीड सो मच सपोर्ट फिजिकली ऑल्सो दैन समबड़ी एल्स द एक्सपर्ट्स आर टेकिंग केयर ऑफ दैट एंड यू नॉट ऑल द टाइम गिल्टी ओ मैं ये करा रही हूँ मैं सेवा करा रही हूँ बच्चों तो दैन फैमिली कैन बी फैमिली यू नो जस्ट गिव शावर विद लाव वंडरफुल वंडरफुल दैट इज एग्जैक्टली वाई आई थिंक वी आर टॉकिंग ऑन एयर टूडे बिकॉज 
so important to just talk about it, like Keerthi said, you know, people have started talking about it. I'm so glad to hear that. Absolutely. And another thing that people oftentimes are scared about is when we give medicine, oftentimes morphine is one of the many, many medicines that we give. And people are scared that this is making someone die faster mm. or we're giving too much and now they're sleepy. But this is definitely not the case. Um, we only give medicine if it's needed and we start with the lowest dose possible and we work our way up. Um, and there's a special term for that that's proportionate. Um, so that's another thing sometimes people are scared about that I wanted to address. No, that's, that's good because morphine definitely is associated with, uh, you know, something. No, 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 it's too much. Like, you know, it's a strong medicine they're giving. So, but yeah. it's relieving pain. Uh, so. Definitely relieving pain. And oftentimes people do get very lethargic because you're not eating and drinking at the very end of life. In fact, it's uncomfortable for you to eat at the very end because your digestive system is now shutting down. It's not working the same way it used to work and it works in all of us. So um, that's another thing people are scared about is, are we starving them? Why are we not feeding them? Why are we not giving them water? Mm -hmm. um, actually, people who are dying don't want those things. Um, and it's, it's a big, big, big point of contention sometimes, even within families. Yeah, that, that brings me to think that uh, definitely we need to trust our experts. I mean, we need to educate ourselves repeatedly, I sell, tell us, uh, say this on the show, but definitely trust the experts too, because I'm sure I both worry that they don't know anything, they don't know My patient, like, you know, my mother, father, whatever, loved one, they're not doing anything, how will he get better? So yeah. you, you, you guys know better, I'm sure. Let me take a quick break and come back. Sabda Fir Swagat and I'm so grateful we are getting together. It's not the difficult, uh, you know, conversations karniya, but somehow lagda hai Dr. Neha de naal gal karke ki difficult ringe hi nahi. Now I'm going to change my narrative. Ke these are the tough conversations, eh, difficult co uh, conversations. I mean, lagda hai unhu hi sanu apne dimag ch badalna pega. Because jad tak asi ho kende rende hai na, asi unhu apne vaaste muskil banaya hunda hai. Don't you think, uh, Dr. Neha? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so I really, um, you know, applaud you. The way you were telling us, it's become easy. This conversation, I'm sure, sare karande, which oh, ik asan conversation ban jayegi, and I'm going to do it right now, change my narrative. Kyunki mein bhoat wari kendi ho, mushkil hai, mushkil gal karni hai, kuch mushkil nahi hai. You know, it's uh, inevitable, kuch nahi ho sakda. Achha hai ki pyaar naal gal kari hai. Just on the to see, actually, thodi ji rosy picture hai ke, waakki ye oji picture hai ke, you know, art therapy ho rahi hai, music therapy ho rahi hai, massage therapy ho rahi hai. So, all that is happening then, kyo nahi asi, you know, jado ye oji science ne athe tak paunch ke hai, then why not avail this, I would say. So, how do you get to that care? Like, does everybody get this care or who gets it and how to get it? Yeah, um, so I'm glad that it's less scary and I'm glad that it's a little bit more of a rosy picture. Of course, there's going to be good days and bad days for anybody and everybody, but it's nice to know and I hope everyone knows that there is that support out there and there is someone and you're not, you're not alone in those moments and your loved one's not alone. Um, so to get the palliative care service, um, there's two forms of it. There's the outpatient and there's the inpatient. So jab the si hospital mein ho, you get the inpatient one. And jab ghar pe ho, so you get the outpatient. So if you're an outpatient, a large part of those are going to be from your oncologist. So a lot of cancer patients, um, the oncologist will refer them. And it's very interesting because recently, um, just within the past few years, there was a study that shows if you get referred early in lung cancer, you actually live longer and you live better because you have such good symptom control and you have such good support from palliative care. 
So I, I hope people do not feel scared and um, they realize that, that palliative care is a very big benefit to them that they should so, avail of. So Neha, can family ask for it? Families definitely can ask for it and have asked for it. I one time took care of um, a young man who was in his, uh, I think he was 36, and he asked for it himself because he had been doing reading and he was doing a college project on advanced care planning. Mm -hmm. So anyone can ask for it. And um, actually a large, um, not maybe not a large, but a good number of referrals to us in New York State, which is where I practice, come from different doctors um, who want their patients to get uh, become eligible for medical marijuana. Um, we, we definitely, I'm certified in that, we specialize in that, and there are many different medical indications, but oftentimes at the end of life when you are having decreased appetite, you're having weight loss, you're having nausea, anxiety, these are all symptoms that actually can be helped with medical marijuana. So that's another realm in which we can help. Okay, okay. So basically managing the symptoms, managing and making life easier. Yeah, um, we, we definitely specialize in a huge array of symptoms, nausea, pain, your typical physical symptoms, fatigue, low appetite, we also manage emotional symptoms, anxiety, depression. These are very, very common. And what's different from us than perhaps like a primary care doctor or a psychiatrist is that we are working with usually a shorter timeline. So whatever interventions and medicines we're using, they need to work pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a little bit different than when you're being managed for say anxiety or depression and you're 20 and you have a long life. So it's slightly different, but that's why it's good to have someone who's specialized that can manage these conditions for you. But uh, Neha, is it only for the patient palliative care or you know some ailments or somebody who's very sick, it, it's very hard on the family around the person. So does care extend to the family members too? Some kind of emotional Absolutely. or counseling or something? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's a holistic service and we believe in the whole person, which includes their loved ones, their family. We always ask about who is your support system? Who do you live with? Who's in your life? So if you're ever seeing a palliative care doctor and you feel they're being a little intrusive, just go with it. We're trying to get to know you and we're trying to see how we can help you. Um, and one of the nice things about hospice at the very end of life is that after the patient, your loved one passes away, there's bereavement services, which means you get support after they pass away to the family. You get phone calls, you get programs if you have kids and it helps them process what happened. It helps them understand what happened and, and just make sure that everyone is okay i'm so glad we talked all this with you sneha but uh, as an individual what do you think i mean i feel everything has to come to an end theoretically we all know that but emotionally when we are you know even remotely uh, at even at this age parents di gal aandi hai kisi di gal aandi hai te sada na anxiety shuru ho jandi hai ki koi jaan te nahi lagya middle of the night there's a call from india and we all get very anxious you know that there's so this is this will go on but for you what does it mean uh, we often say i have a friend who reminded me she's a new zealander and she said we don't say death we say the person passed away to another world so mm -hmm. if we leave it like, who knows? Maybe the other world is really pretty. Like you showed us that palliative care and hospice care, not hospice, but at least palliative care is kind of can be good. So uh, maybe, you know, there's another world there which is pretty. So we are less scared when we think of that. What do you think? 30 seconds. Yeah, I completely agree with you. We don't know, we're never really gonna know, but that's why it's important to have a belief system. It's important to have the spirituality. Um, both hospice and palliative care are wonderful programs that, that turn a very grim and dismal situation. And we at least try our best to make it a little bit better. And what I oftentimes tell people when they're struggling with the fear or with the feeling of, oh, I'm giving up, I, I am so exhausted, I've been through so much. Oftentimes my chemotherapy patients say, this is just not worth it. I mean, sure, I'm living, but it's miserable living like this. Um, so 
you know, when I'm counseling patients like that, I oftentimes say, don't think of it as giving up. Think of it as just changing your hope now from living as long as I can to living the best I can and trying to hope for having the best transition that I can. Um, and, and I think you're right, you know, Sadi culture, may we believe in reincarnation. And so you don't know, you know, what life you're going to come back in, what's going to happen. We're running out of time, but we're so grateful, Dr. Neha Sanyal. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure, wonderful opportunity. Thank you. So, Sara Novi, Bod Bod, this is all that is done. I think that everything, as much as the attachment is done, as much as the attachment is done, as much as the attachment is done, you never know when it's going to be finished, but at least it's not going to be finished. I'm going to go to India, so we'll come back and see you guys, hopefully, God willing. Now, I'm going to go to India.